Listen up, get ready, I'm not gonna take no more. There's a revolution, a revelation going on in my soul. Buckle up, get ready, we're not gonna say uh, Welcome back to Live from the Heartland for the week of uh, April 6th. And once again, I'm Michael James. And I've always been a fan of uh, the work of the Works Projects Administration in the 30s. I love murals that I've seen in various post offices. My favorite mural, I got to say, is John Brown out in Wichita, Kansas. Um, and uh, our music producer, Lynn Orman, hipped me to a fellow named T.G. Jamraz. And he is a filmmaker, an actor, a photographer, a writer, uh, a creator in many forms. And he has a new movie out. And it is about um, the Uptown Post Office and the murals in that post office. So without any more uh, jabber on my part, let's bring him on. Hello to you. Hello, hello. You, Thanks for having me. Glad Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about how this movie came to be. My understanding is you were uh, standing in line at a post office in Uptown and something hit you. Well, have you ever been to the Uptown Post Office? I have, but it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, you know, they don't look up when they're there and they don't realize <laughs> the beautiful artwork that's there. And some of the people who work there don't even realize it. And what it is, is that that post office in Uptown um, was built in the 1930s and it was built through the New Deal uh, program uh, that was through the Justice Department. It was pre-WPA. It was like the program oh. that they established what they did was they set aside 1% of the budget of the building for artwork. And so they would have contests for artists. And I was up there one time standing there surprisingly in a long line at Christmas. And I kind of just looked up and I said, oh, my God, what are these? And two years later, I found myself standing in the living room of the uh, artist's son, the 90-year-old artist's son in New York City. So I always say, be careful when you ask questions because it takes you down rabbit holes and you find yourself doing things. Um, so it was, it, I found myself just kind of um, interested in the beautiful murals, but I was like, who are in these? Who are these people represented? And the artist's name was Henry Barnum Poor. He was a New York artist who was one of the greatest artists of the 20th century nobody really knows about. He was a contemporary of Hopper. His house that he built is about eight miles from where Hopper's house is. And he put Carl Sandburg in the left one and Louis Sullivan in the right one. So if you go in there, you're like, oh, that's Carl Sandburg, I think. And then you find out, yeah, it is. But why is he holding a guitar? Okay. So these are some of the questions that I started with. Like, who are the people? What are they? And it took me on a, a journey where I traveled around and worked on it for seven years in between other projects I was working on. Uh, it's great. And so the name of the film is what? The name of the film is called The Murals. And uh, I have a CD here, the soundtrack. It's called The Murals. And what it is, it's basically a documentary about the Uptown Post Office murals, who made them, why they were made, and why the three artists kind of connect. It's not a biography of each of them, because that would take a long time. But I kind of wanted to understand why Henry Varnaport chose these two artists to represent Chicago and re represent his ideals. What I found along the way is that Louis Sullivan and Carl Sandburg and Henry Varnum Poor, the, the, their artistic mission was very similar. They were prolific artists who pop, popped out a lot of stuff. We all know Carl Sandburg did everything, right? He wrote poetry, reviewed films, you know, he did lots of things. But I he didn't also, know he was a, played the guitar. I well, didn't here's the funny thing he would play the guitar. And at the end of his poetry readings, when he went on the road, he'd say, well, you can sit around and listen to me play guitar. I would have done it anyway. If you want to leave, feel free to leave. And he collected this book called The American Songbag. So what he did, this is one of his projects. And he worked on it for several years. What he did when he rode around and went, rode on the trains, he met all these people. He collected all these songs of America. So they're all Americana, uh, you know, songs. 1800s, 1900s. And what's interesting about the book is he would play the songs. And then a young, uh, you know, Pete Seeger, a young Woody Guthrie picked this book up and learned these songs. And then Bob Dylan picked it up and learned them. In fact, Bob Dylan has a story where he went to Carl Sandburg's house unannounced to tell him he was a poet as well. And um, to play him and, you know, to, to tell him he was influenced by it. And up to people like Wilco today. 
So what I decided to do was kind of focus on the Carl Sandburg portion of the film about being a musician because nobody, nobody knew about it. So I went down to Galesburg. I talked to some historians, which is in the film, The Murals, which is actually screening next week at Loyola, April 11th at 6 p.m. It's free. I was and, <laughs> Yeah. And so what's interesting, we had the, uh, I had some people from the Old Town School of Folk Music record some of the songs on the soundtrack. I had some people I was working with. I recorded a couple songs. So you can stream the soundtrack, the murals on Spotify. Um, you can hear the songs in the soundtrack to the film, the murals. And so what I did is I focused on that. Louis Sullivan, um, I focused on a bit of his theory of being an artist. In the murals themselves at the post office, Louis Sullivan's holding a model of a building. It's the Carson Peary Scott building, okay? which is now the target <laughs> on State Street, right? You know this, of course. <laughs> so tar the Target Corporation bought it and restored the building beautifully. Well, that was one of um, his, you know, his uh, highest achievements, the Carson Peary Scott building, the way it was designed. So he's holding that building. And I'm like, well, it's a Target now. Wow. So what I did on some research, if you go on the TikTok, because I know that your viewers are all on TikTok, um, if you search goth target, that target comes up with over a million hits because young people have adopted it and call it goth target. And they have no idea, probably Louis Sullivan designed it, but it's, a uh, it's something that's very relevant today. So I kept finding these reasons why, oh my God, all this stuff is still relevant. These artists have been gone for a long time. People are, you know, people are obsessed with Sullivan, his designs. People are obsessed with Sandberg, his poetry and Henry Varnum Poor as well. So I just found that all the artists really kind of spoke to me because, um, you know, they were, what's interesting about all the artists is that they were real true American artists and they believed in democracy and they believed in the American worker. And they, you know, people accused them of being communists because they believed in the American worker. And we know that Carl Sandburg wrote about the common people all the time. Um, and, you would be surprised at how much Louis Sullivan wrote about democracy. A lot of people don't know that. Um, in his biography, he wrote a lot about the importance of, you know, the work you do, who you are, having honor and everything you do. And, and so I really found it interesting. The government paid artists to make art at one point. Crazy, right? Hopefully that'll come back. You say it took seven years. Did yes. you have a lot of help? Did you have to raise money? Did you do it on your own? Give fill us in. I know you got a lot of musical support. Well, what happened is um, somebody asked me that question at, at a screening. They said to me, I go into the post office and I mail my stuff and leave. And I say, oh, that's a nice mural. What caused you to stay working on it for so long? And Carl Sandberg once said projects just walked up to him. And this project walked up to me like there was a story to tell. Uh, yeah, I mean, I worked odd jobs, you know, I was... Telling, I, I remember one weekend I had to get the sound work done and I was doing some work at Soldier Field for a Bears games to pay for the sound work. So, you know, sometimes you do whatever you have to. Right. On. Um, but I found along the way that people donated their time. I interviewed some experts about Henry Varnum Poor. They wanted to tell the story, you know, uh, the Galesburg, uh, Sandberg historian, the people at the Cliff Dwellers Club downtown here in Chicago where Louis Sullivan had an honorary membership. Um, they all wanted to, to tell the stories. So they donated their time. And I had a few people help me with sound and camera occasionally and that type of thing. But, um, you know, it was a kind of a labor of, uh, I wouldn't say labor of love, but just a labor of, you know, I, I just thought it had to be, the story should be told, you know. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I don't know if I'll get over to Loyola on the 11th at 6 o'clock at 1032 West Sheridan. But sooner or later, I'm going to see this movie. I'm going to go back to that post office. Let me ask you how it was received. You showed the film in New York at uh, the Roca Museum. You had it at Old Town School of Folk Music. Yeah, I've had a few screenings. We screened at the Sandberg Historic Site last year, too. And, you know, the, the documentary is broken down into the story of Henry Varnum Poor a bit, a little bit about Sandberg, a little about Sullivan. So each screening kind of has a different focus. The people in 
the Old Town School of Folk Music, they loved all the music and the Sandberg stuff. I had interviewed Dan Zanes, who was a Grammy-winning artist, who had done some Sandberg songs too, some of these American Songbag. But when I went to New York, I was really surprised because I went to where the house is. Henry Varnum Poor hand-built a house called Crow House. And right now, it's they have a petition out there. Um, they're trying to save it and make it a museum, okay? And we... Um, and Roca Museum was in Nyack, and he helped found that museum. So the two screenings I had out there, people showed up that were, they were like, oh, my parents were friends with the Poors, and when I was a little kid, I ran around the house. It was like a family reunion at one place, and they were so emotional watching it because Peter Poor, the 92-year-old son, was telling stories. I was showing pictures of the house, and they're like, yep, that's just how I remember it. And they were all like, hey, your sister was my friend's, you know, your, my friend's sister in second grade. You remember me? So it was this kind of crazy thing where I was here and I tapped into some emotional thing that they were, you know, recounting the glory days of South Mountain Road where everyone lived on Burgess Meredith, Maxwell Anderson, um, uh, John Hausman, uh, Ben Hecht, you know, it goes on and on right? the names of people that were there. And so I kind of got into discovering i started here on you know over here on uh, broadway and i end up on south mountain road in new york talking about kurt vale and lonnie Letia, you know and about how they came you know that they would hang out there Mar marcel ducamp would hang out there and so i'm talking to peter poor and as an example he says to me hey you want to see some family photos and i said sure he's like here's me as a kid and here's my mom her her my mom's friend in the village took him I said, oh, that's cool. What, what was his name? Um, Man Ray. And I went, what? So I basically saw pictures Man Ray took that nobody has ever seen because they're family photos. So, you know, along the way, I just, these names that kept dropping, I was like, these are like the big names of the 20th century, you know? And a lot of people forget about it. And I think it's important because um, I just think there was a time, those people who ran the, the uh, the government at the time and during the war, they knew that it was important, that art was important. The old Churchill quote, you know, they say, cut the art programs. And he says, um, you know, why should, we, why should we pay for art programs? And Churchill says, well, if we cut the art programs, what are we fighting for? Well, let's hope we get a lot of art programs down the line as we have a tsunami of democracy in this country. I look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, a reminder to everybody that on April 11th, the uh, the murals film will show at uh, Loyola University at 1032 Sheridan. And uh, next time we have you on, you could tell us about your work as an actor in The Dark Knight, some of the other projects <laughs> you're working on. And uh, it's really good to meet you, man. And I'm really glad that you've done this project. Yeah, it's good to meet you, too. And the Chicago flag behind me, that's my next project.